Hi, in this video I'm going to demonstrate how to set up the port forwarding in the Huawei B315 router. This is the B315 router and many people use this because it has the ability to be 3G or 4G run, meaning it can, instead of having ADSL, it can actually run completely off a SIM card. All right, the first thing is I've already set up the router on my network. So my default uh, IP address for this router is 10.0.0.2, which will immediately take you to the home page or the login screen of the router. Now, it uh, gives you the mine is running on 4G. It gives you the status. And if you want to do anything here, you need to be able to log in. So you must be able to have the administrator username and password in order to do this uh, port forwarding that I'm going to demonstrate. Okay, so it says settings. I will then add in my username. Right, in order to do the port forwarding, I will use the security tab here, the menu of the security ta tab, and there are various options here. I'm going to use the virtual server and the DDNS items. The reason why I'm doing it that way is because I'm trying to set up port forwarding so that being on a network outside of my home network. For example, maybe I'm on holiday and I want to log into my work computer sitting at my office, but I need to go through the router. The router is the gateway that allows me to access my home office, or maybe it's a camera setup. The camera network video recorder is sitting behind the router. And in order to get to that camera network video recorder, you need to set up the port forwarding within the router. So the router knows that if you are accessing this router from outside, from the WAN, the wide area network, not the LAN, I'm not talking about that you're sitting on the same network in the same premises. I'm saying you're on holiday and you want to log into your cameras or server at work, you need, you'll be querying your router. Your router needs to know to which server it must forward your queries and reply. Uh, the queries from the server back to you. And that is why we use the virtual server option and the DDNS. The reason for the DDNS is if you are unable to um, have a static IP address, I uh, have a long video on the Hikvision camera setup for remote view, and I go into a lot of detail about what is a DDNS. In a nutshell, the point of the DDNS is that our ISPs, Internet Service Providers, lease us IP addresses. The IP address is kind of your address to on the internet where your router is sitting. So if I want to connect to uh, your router, I need to have your IP address. But the problem is, is that IP address may be changing every day or every second day or once a week, depending on your ISP. Your ISP, internet service provider, may lease you an IP address and in three days later when your re router is rebooted, it may give you another IP address, the next available IP address in the queue. So because IP addresses are not usually static, that means they are assigned dynamically to the users, we need the DDNS. What the DDNS does, it is a third party that provides a name resolution, meaning you will then register with maybe dynamic DNS, DDNS, or no IP, or companies like that, and they will allow you to register a name, and then they know that when you look for that name, it will go and find the IP address, and they will keep the update of the IP address. So when your ISP changes the IP address, they will quickly um, resolve that and say, right, if you're looking for this name, this is the new IP address, and they will keep your router available on the WAN through this DDNS. If you're not following what I'm saying, it will come to light while I demonstrate this video. Okay, so to do the port forwarding, we're going to look at the virtual server. In my case, sorry, not LAN, yeah, virtual server. Whoops. Uh, keep going to the wrong place here, virtual server. Now, in my example, I'm just going to demonstrate how to set up a NVR. Now, I have an NVR, which basically what an NVR is, is a network video recorder. That, the, this name here, Dahua, is just a brand. This could be Bosch, it could be um, Samsung, it could be Hikvision, and so forth. So this is just a brand, and where did this come from? This is me. I've actually added this. So you could add your own virtual server. For example, you, your virtual server, you could give it a name and call it um, uh, Terminal... Term, 
term server. Maybe it's your terminal server at your at your office. Um, it could be your web server or whatever server or computer. Maybe it's at your house. Maybe you just want to call it John. John. Let's not do that. Just say John PC. Whatever you want to call it, it doesn't matter. That's just this section here, which says name, is something that's easy for you to identify. It has no effect on the settings of the Huawei. Uh, router. So that's just something for you. Now, what is the WAN port? This is the port that is available on the internet, meaning when you are trying to log in to your server, the port that your server is advertising is this port here. So on the network video recorder, which I have on one of my networks, the available port that is advertised to the world is three quadruple seven. That means that if somebody is trying to access this server, uh, they need to know the port number. They can't try and access my network video recorder on port 44,224. That is not the available port that my NVR is set to. So you need to know the port that you are going to advertise. Okay, so in, in my case, the NVR port is 3 quadruple, uh, quadruple 7. Okay, then the IP address. Where is this? Uh, server. The IP address is simple. Log into the server which you want to be able to um, uh, forward to. Uh, this might be your, as I said, your terminal server, your PC, and find out its IP address. Very important that that IP address must be a static IP address. There's no point in doing port forwarding on a network which is using DHCP, meaning dynamic host configurable um, protocol, and that once you set up the current IP address and then in a week, the IP address of that local client that you're trying to log into has changed. So it has to have a static IP address. So I have made the server that I'm trying to log into, just listen to the language, I'm trying to log into this server remotely or from a, um, uh, an, an outside location, outside of the LAN, this is the IP address. And then the, the, they want the port again, that's fine. Now the protocol. You can choose the protocol. Usually, I just say TCP UDP. TCP means there is an ha is an actual handshake. It means that it is uh, uh, connection orientated. Uh, it verifies that it packet got sent and received. Right? UDP is works on a, just a best effort. It just sends a packet and hopes for the best. Kind of like how TV is streamed. Right? And then the status here is on. So you can add this. You may be your local computer that you're trying to um, be, make available for yourself to connect to, maybe it's IP address 300, or no, sorry, that's not right. Maybe it's IP address 202. And then you just say, okay, then it will remember that and so forth. So I'm just gonna cancel here because I don't want to interfere with my already setup. Okay, so this now is the server list. You can add many servers. Maybe you want to have a NVR. Maybe you want to have a terminal server. Maybe you want to have a client. Maybe one of your um, your receptionist computer. Whatever, whatever, whatever. Whatever you want to log into on the internal network from outside, these are the computers. So you could populate that with uh, 20 different. As long as the you're telling the Huawei router, if somebody comes with a, with a request and he's looking for port 3 quadruple 7, forward them to the local computer or server 10.0.0.251. That's the logic behind this uh, virtual server. And they ask you, and what protocol is allowed? TCP and UDP. Okay, no problem. And the status is on. You must say status on, and then uh, you save it. You say apply, and then it will remember it. Now, that means at, up to this point, you have allowed the router to know that if I'm trying to log into a local machine or a server that the the router the Huawei router will know to forward any packets onto this server. Okay, but now how do you from a remote location actually get access to your router? And that's the next step, and that is why we need the DDNS settings. Whoops, now it logged me out. Okay, let's just log back in. Right, thanks for waiting. Now we go to the DDNS. This is the DDNS setup. Now you can add your DDNS. Now, as I said earlier, you might want to um, create a membership or, I mean, a, a login at one of these companies. What these companies are, if you go to no IP, it is 
a company that provides you the ability to forward your packets because you have not bought a static public IP address. Remember, there's a difference between a public IP address and a private IP address. The private IP address is the IP address you set in your home or your office that people from the outside world cannot see. You can just randomly use any IP address. Public IP addresses are IP addresses that, for example, even this company, noip.com, this is just a name, but actually in, in the web browser knows that noip.com is actually an IP address, and you can do the uh, CMD, and you can actually find out this IP address by saying NS lookup uh, www.noip.com and it will reply with the actual IP address um, unless I've made a mistake here address is 823.224.107 um, for noip.com so that's the IP address for example if you want to know the IP address of a website in its lookup uh, www google.com then google's ip address is 2165822336 and i'm sure they've got a host of ip addresses right so that just shows you that this is a public ip address it doesn't change now because you in your case uh, the reason why you're setting up the dns is you haven't got the public ip address you've got you you haven't got a static public ip address you need a company like no ip or dynamic dns to offer you a resolution what the resolution is is that you choose a username and password when you try and uh, log in to your router you will use that username and password and then it will know automatically which IP address your router is. So what it does is every 10 or so minutes, it checks in with your router and, and, and it says to your router, what is your current IP address? And then when it has that, it updates its table at noip.com. And then when somebody is looking for it, then they know, okay, the router that you are giving a name to, you'll see now we're going to give it a name. Maybe you call it your username, let's say dom domain name for for this will be let's say you, you create an account and you call it uh, New York home office uh, dot dynamic DDNS dot com then you'll get a username maybe your username is I'm just going to say for example John okay John and then you'll put your password here it's this domain name that I'm talking about that resolves it into a IP address in the same way that you looked at www.noip.com is actually an IP address well you you giving your router a name you're calling it your New York New York home office and that name is the name that you chose at the company uh, dynamic DNS or maybe no IP there are many companies that offer the service and then when you look for this um, IP uh, this domain name it automatically resolves that into an IP address now if you open your remote desktop connection then you would be actually typing in this uh, address for example you would actually be typing in from your local from your WAN address you would say New York home office dot dynamic DDNS dot com and then it would then resolve that through dynamic DNS company into an IP address and then it'll ask you for your username and password instead of actually just putting in a public IP address. All right, now I hope that's clear in terms of what the DDNS is actually offering you. It's resolving that for you and then you'll put your password in. So where do you actually get this username and password from? No problem. Once you actually sign up at noip.com, then what will happen is they will ask you, for your for a username and password for yourself you sign you sign up and once you uh, uh, sign up they will ask you for a possible email username and password and then they'll ask you what host name do you want to choose and it's that point there that you are giving your router a public host name or domain name which the company no IP or dynamic DNS is actually resolving into an IP address right so in order to do the port forwarding it's actually a two-step process you will then you will first do as I've shown you you'll first do the 
um, virtual server as I've already set it up. But in order to actually allow the packets to, tra to actually get access to your router, meaning how do these packets from your, maybe you're on holiday and you're sending packets to your router, how do the packets know where to go? And that is the DDNS. So once you've set up the DDNS, you'll put your um, domain name that you've chosen, your username and password, and you'll say, uh, add, add and, and it's done, you save it. And that's it. That is how you set up port forwarding on the Huawei uh, router. Um, thanks for watching.